Greetings and hallucinations to all you folks out there. Just a quick forewarning before this video. Um, that was repetitively redundant. Uh, I just got off of a 13 hour work shift and I'm in a fairly good bit of pain at the moment. So uh, this may not be my best work, but I figured you guys still deserve a cast because I did miss one day last week. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into this, do the best that I can. And you guys will be able to see how I perform at my worst. If you want to make a game of it, count the screw ups, tongue ties and mistaken names in this game and uh, add your add your total in the comments. See, there's one right there for you. And we can have a little fun with that because there are going to be quite a few tongue twisters in this game, I guarantee you. Because the game is on four versus four Canis. So and for some reason, the entire Southern team decided to go hot pink. I do not know why this is. I do not know who coerced them into this, but it is confusing nonetheless. So I'm gonna be slipping up names all over the place. So. On the southern side, we're going to refer to this as Team Barbie, and on the north there are the G.I. Joes. The southern side, we have UEF for Parzival, Michelio going, uh, that is Seraphim, Zoe going Seraphim, and the Supreme Noob going Aeon. None of them have gone Cybran. There is no love for Cybran, but that is obvious because Cybran is the manliest faction. On the northern side, where we have Y chromosomes aplenty, we have the self-conscious mechs, Weed Whacker, Icy Nightmare, and Saint Willen. Now, one thing I do notice going into this game is that there is a tremendous rank advantage to the northern team. The southern team has an 800 and a 600, while the northern side has 18, 15, 13, and 11. So... Yeah, I'm not sure where this game is going to go, but hopefully it's a good one. Someone recommended it to me, so we will dive right in without further ado and see where it takes us. On the northern side, Icy Nightmare going for a strong land build. Three early expansion factories running to front with his ACU, and we've got a lot of power build up in the back for all players. Air Player has laid down his air factory. Kudos to you for doing your job. St. Willem moving ACU to front. All four ACUs to front for the northern team. Well done. Land Factory is going down for Self-Conscious Mechs and for Weed Whacker on the left-hand side. On the southern side, we have three Air Factories out for Zoe. Very ambitious with that build. We've got two bombers building and one producing scouts. Land for the rest of the folks. Zoe's going to stay back in base. We've got one ACU to the right, one to the left, and one to center. So a little bit more uh, spread thin for the southern team, but they are getting their expansions out. And I do like this little piece of aggression up here. Got an engineer out on engineer, or not an engineer, a bomber. See, there's another one. Add one to your count. A bomber out on engineer killing duty. It is going to miss a whole bunch of bombs and then come back around and finally get some. Uh, tanks, that is Mantis on the left-hand side. Those are going to congregate. Nice little uh, denial right here. Um, in more significant numbers and a steadier stream than strikers are coming in from the southern side but zoe is building so many freaking bombers and still building more than enough interceptors holy cow that naming mod is brutal when you zoom in look at all the green <laughs> i can't see anything yes just like a barbie to overname everything because they think everything is a pet all right all of these T1 bombers getting eliminated by three interceptors because Zoe, despite having double the air force of the other team, has decided to sit on the interceptors back in base where they basically do no good. Run bys on the left, run bys, well, the left is over here. Run bys on the left, <laughs> run bys on the right. I am so mentally toasted. Uh, thankfully, I have kind of hit the hyper phase, so I don't really feel tired anymore, but the mental fatigue is still there. Um, <laughs> we've got. <laughs> Two groups of Mantis moving in down here. Killing off some mass extractors, some engineers, a few tanks getting flung. T1 bombs being flung at them. These are actually going to make it back into the base, kill off some engineers, kill off that point defense before it was built, and they're going to start raiding the power. This group of Mantis, on the other hand, has been forced back by a group of tanks. Michelio is looking a bit exposed over there, and we have a very vast sea of red moving southward. St. Willen has got quite the significant tank force moving up, and he's been given even more by Icy Nightmare. <laughs> 
There is so much red flowing down the right hand side of the map. It must be that time of month for the Joes, but thankfully all of the Barbies on the Southern team have the solution to that and hopefully they will be able to stem the tide. Over here on the left hand side, the Mantis are once again congregating in greater numbers than the Strikers are. That will take some doing to deny, but we do have a nice build up over here. This is going to be where the action is though, so many tanks engaging over here, hopefully the Auroras can kite it out, we're going to see how well they do, very nice on Michelio's, that is, no that is Supreme Noob, I told you the names were going to get screwed up, alright, ACU moving to the left to deal with the tanks on the left hand side, tanks moving to the right to deal with the units on the right hand side, thankfully the kiting Auroras are very very powerful, with some help from the Tech 1 bombers, those are going to be contained. The southern team is fine for now. We've got Jesters moving in on the left hand side, but as you can see, that very large interceptor force that was mentioned before is going to be able to eliminate them. Zoe, I would recommend you keep your interceptors closer to the front because interceptors are slow. They don't do a whole lot of good hanging around in the back of the base. Still, T1 bombers hammering down on St. Willem. He does have mobile flak moving in. Thankfully, that will give him a little bit of a boost. Michelio did a whole lot of damage up here, actually. I caught it out of the corner of my eye, but I forgot to mention it. He did kill off three Tech 2 Mass Extractors in the north and had to run back. It looks like Icy Nightmare just took two TAC launchers. He's going to start trying to dodge. Let me slow this down a bit. You can see I was trying to keep his ACU as close to Michelio as he possibly can. He also has a TAC launcher, but the UEF, uh, he is choosing to go for more eco. So we got to see how well he can dodge. Tech 1 Torp launcher. That's going to be the kill shot. Icy Nightmare has been eliminated by three TAC launches from a player 500 below his rank. Why he was that close to another Torp commander, I will never figure out, but close he was, and that was nasty. Kudos to Michelio for eliminating that player. I see Nightmare lamenting the fact on the left-hand side. I know he should have caught that. He's a good player. He should have known better. St. Willen is at 1,600 health. Two bombs from Noth as he's going to go down. So that is two players <laughs> eliminated off the northern side. I never saw that coming. I thought that this was going to be a raffle stomp on the part of the northern team, but clumsy ACU placement and then accumulated damage without air cover, and two players are down from the northern team. Very well done. This is probably the only time you'll ever see a pack of Barbies just absolutely obliterate an army of Joes. I don't know if they pimp slapped them to death or what happened there, but it is what it is. That is an elimination of half of the northern team and the better part of the land forces. So I think, unless they screw up something, wow, voice break. Unless they screw up something really badly, the southern team has it in the bag. Michelio is going to start throwing up air defense. There are tort bombers crawling all over him. We have a problem over here. Self-conscious mechs has... Uh, I just realized self-conscious mechs was the only one that lost mass extractors to that TAC commander. Funny. Self-conscious mechs is under fire from a fairly significant group of Tech 2 units. He's not throwing down point defense. He's not doing anything. He's not bringing units to the front. He's leaving his his ACU out there to die. Why would you do that to yourself? Nothas coming in, landing bombs. Tech 2 forces are going to kill that off. He was in the process of building a quantum gateway and Tech 3 power generator. But he had his ACU hanging all the way out here completely unprotected. Well, he had some units with him, but he should have started running back long ago. If he would have hung back, got that thing online, and actually done something with it instead of letting his ACU die, he probably could have used Rambo comms to make up the difference in the land force that they were experiencing. He could have put the SAM pack on them and had very strong SACUs that could protect themselves and he would have been able to do a lot towards coming back from this situation, but that is sad to see. Terrible ACU placement is the name of the game on this map. Alright, building Corsairs for the purpose 
of anti-air is the last thing that you want to do, you need to go listen to my um, tutorial series on the air units to see what you should have done on this situation. Um, Corsairs have the single worst anti-air damage of any air unit with an anti-air gun with the exception of Tech 3 gunships. Of all the fighter bombers, of all the interceptors, even comparing to all of that, the Corsair has basically non-existent air damage. You cannot use them to fight interceptors. Like a quarter the mass in interceptors will own Corsairs. All right, we got Tech 2 bombers moving up. Probably going to get a snipe fairly quickly here on this ACU. Just basically waiting for the Southern team to finish purging the map from all Y chromosomes. That is going to be coming up shortly. I do believe there's an ACU. No, that's not an upgrade. He's still building point defense for some reason, even though he's being attacked by air. Why you would be doing that, I don't know. He is being hammered by Nothas. He's going to start an ACU upgrade. I know not what. And he's basically lost his entire air force. So that is the end of it. This is the end. All right, there's the nuke. That is game. All right, folks, count up your tallies, post them in the comments. I really don't care at this point. That is the end of this game, the end of this cast, the end of my day. I am going to hit the sack and thank you so much for joining me for this just endless ramble of nonsense. <laughs> Hopefully you will join me for the next one. All right, guys, see ya.